really cheerful at this point in time. How did this happen? Two things happened. One is that they bottled it. Okay, who are they? The bankers. They knew it was never sustainable to keep growing like this. They knew it. Yeah? And they let it happen anyway because they got penthouse flats, Bentley cars, swimming pools, private airplanes, and they liked those. And they knew that if they took the cash, one day this bubble would burst and all this would happen. And they took it anyway. Worse, uh, does anybody follow uh, Peston, Robert Peston's blog on the BBC? Isn't he fantastic? Um, he summed up a couple of days ago something that is a great injustice in all this. Is that when the amount that we were saving wasn't enough to prop up that 33 to 1 debt to asset ratio, do you know what our banks and our rich economies did? We turned to China and we turned to India, <coughs> where millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people have been working on subsistence wages and still managing to save up cash. Do you know that China currently holds 1.2 trillion in foreign currency reserves? And we don't have any. We borrowed that money of the Chinese and of the Indians, bluntly hard-working peasants earning a few ban and sticking it away to look after their future. And our people spent it on stuff that we throw away. So the second thing that caused this, as well as, quite frankly, the greed of the banks, was China and India turning around and saying, we have had enough of working 16 hours a day to prop up your inflated lifestyles. We want a slice of the cake, give us the money back. And that's well evidenced. Bluntly, that's a good thing. <laughs> Big picture term. It's not very pleasant for our economy at the moment. So all that, and for a bit of a moment, you start to realise what the US in particular, and the UK as its little poodle, as normal, and several other Western democracies have done. I'm not going to feel guilty about it because I didn't know it was happening. I've only started investigating, reading and researching this since this so-called recession started. But once you find out the truth and know and realise that a very small number of now very wealthy people must have known they were doing this, you can't help but have some sympathy with whoever it was that put this sign up on Wall Street a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. You can't help but a certain, what's the word, schadenfreude, when you watch Lehman Brothers closing down. Yeah, I feel very sorry for their junior staff on poor wages, but seeing the directors and the, the trading floor leave, you think, go and get a proper job. Yeah, I really like it. So anyway, that kind of stuff is shocking, and you realise that this was bound to happen. Yeah? People bottling it, and China and India calling in the debt. You can't tell people forever, you keep working hard so that we can have a BMW. It was never going to last forever. And then I looked at this graph. And I looked at the shape of it. It's a very famous shape of graph. It's called the hockey stick. Yeah? And it looks familiar. It looks like this. The growth of debt. And you start looking at other famous campaigns and other stuff that's happening in the world at the moment. And you start looking at the shape of their graphs. So the money supply, because money is debt, has exactly the same shape. And by now I hope you're thinking, I've seen this graph before somewhere. Yeah? The growth of consumption. Yeah? The use of the Earth's natural resources. And do you start to try and put two and two together and start realising 
that of course if we're building an economy based on money as debt, yeah, which is based on things we use and throw away, then yes, of course, that must be propped up by increasing use of natural resources. Because that's at the bottom of every chain of stuff that we use up and throw away.